In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these sourdough mini pumpkin shaped bread bowls. These are the perfect bake for fall cozy weather and soup season. To make the dough, start by adding 200 grams of active sourdough starter to a large mixing bowl and then add in 700 to 750 grams of water that's been warmed to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. I recommend starting with 700 grams of water and adding in the extra 50 grams if needed if your flour seems a little dry when you're mixing the dough. Mix the starter and water together until most of the starter has dissolved into the water and then you'll add in 22 grams of salt and 1000 grams of bread flour. Then take a minute or two and mix all of the ingredients together. I prefer to use a dough whisk for this, but you can also use a silicone spatula or even your hands. I'll have the recipe and all of the tools that I use linked in the description box below. Then when you have a shaggy, messy dough that looks kind of like this and you can no longer see any dry patches of flour, scrape down the sides of the bowl as best as you can and cover the bowl with a lid or a damp towel and allow the dough to rest on the counter for one hour. Next, we'll start a series of four rounds of stretch and folds, each spaced 30 minutes apart. Wet your hands with water to minimize how much the dough sticks, then reach into the bowl on one side and pull the dough, stretch it up, and fold it over itself. Spin the bowl 90 degrees and repeat the same thing on the next side. Keep repeating this all the way around the bowl and you can keep going even around a second time until the dough doesn't really feel like it wants to stretch anymore. You don't want to tear the dough, so once it's giving resistance, you can stop then cover the dough again with a damp towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. With each round of stretch and folds, you should notice that your dough is becoming smoother and stronger. You may even start to notice some fermentation bubbles on the surface of the dough. Repeat each of the four rounds of stretch and folds the same way. By the fourth round of stretch and folds, you will notice that the dough is smooth and starting to get some fermentation bubbles on the top. For the fourth round of stretch and folds, I often like to do what's called a coil fold. So it's essentially the same thing as the stretch and folds you saw me do before, but you're tucking the dough up under itself rather than stretching and folding it over itself. You absolutely don't have to do a coil fold for the fourth round of stretch and folds. You can do another round of stretch and folds just like I showed you before. I often prefer to do a coil fold because it keeps the surface of the dough really smooth and tight, but both will accomplish the same thing in the end. After the fourth round of stretch and folds, cover the dough like you've done before, and now you're going to let the dough rest on the counter and continue its bulk fermentation. My dough only needs about one hour before bulk fermentation is complete, but your dough may need three or even four hours. Some signs that bulk fermentation is done is that the surface of your dough is smooth and glossy. You'll notice lots of fermentation bubbles on the surface of the dough. You should notice that there's air inside of the dough if you gently press on it or if you kind of wiggle your bowl. And you should notice that if you look from the side, the top of your dough is dome shaped. And just remember, your dough does not need to double in size. Look for these other signs that I just mentioned. With bulk fermentation complete, it's time to divide and shape the dough. Pick your bowl up and flip it over and allow your dough to naturally release onto the counter. You can use a little bit of flour or water on the counter to help keep the dough from sticking, but I personally just use my bench scraper to help release the dough if it sticks to the counter. Then, using wet hands and a wet bench scraper or knife, divide your dough into eight roughly equal pieces. I like to just eyeball the eight different pieces, but if you'd like to weigh them, they'll be about 250 grams each. Then for the first round of shaping, I fold each of the edges of the dough piece in towards the center. I then flip the dough piece over so the smooth side is facing up 
and push and pull the dough away from me and then over and towards myself on the counter in order to shape the dough into a ball and tighten the surface of the dough. You don't want too much flour or water on your counter or you won't be able to have any tension between the counter and the dough in order to tighten up the dough ball. I repeat this process with each of the eight dough pieces and then cover the dough and allow it to rest on the counter for 30 minutes. For the final shaping, grab one piece of dough at a time and flip it so the smooth side is down on the counter. Fold the top of the dough down into the center, then fold each of the sides of the dough in towards the center overlapping each other, and then fold the bottom of the dough up. Flip the dough ball over so that the smooth side is up and repeat that same motion of pushing the dough up on the counter and then pushing it over and pulling it back towards yourself. Keep doing this until the surface of your dough is tight, but not so tight that the surface of the dough tears. Then pick up your dough ball and place it smooth side down into a floured banneton. Then repeat this with each of your seven other pieces of dough. After shaping all eight balls of dough, I like to stitch the sides of the dough in towards the center in order to create a little bit more surface tension on the dough. I then sprinkle the top of the dough with flour and place the banetons two at a time into plastic bags and refrigerate overnight for eight to 24 hours. The next day, place a Dutch oven inside of your oven and preheat to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about one hour. While the oven is preheating, place two of your bannetons into the freezer. This will firm up the dough and allow us more time to form the dough into pumpkins before it flattens out. Next, you'll cut butcher's twine into pieces long enough to wrap around the loaf. You'll need three to four pieces per loaf. Once you have a bunch of pieces of butcher's twine cut out, you'll soak the twine in oil. I used avocado oil and then squeeze out the excess oil from the twine. Soaking the twine in oil will help to prevent it from sticking to the bread during baking. To form the dough into pumpkins, arrange three to four pieces of your oiled twine onto the dough in its banneton like you see me showing here. Place a piece of parchment paper on top of the twine and gently flip the dough out of its banneton onto the parchment paper on your counter. Then tie each of the ends of the twine together loosely so that the twine is just gently touching the dough but isn't squeezing into it. Repeat this with each piece of twine and then cut the excess twine off of the ends. Using a bread loam, score any designs that you'd like into your dough. I prepare two loaves at a time this way and then place them side by side in my preheated Dutch oven. I like to add a few ice cubes to the Dutch oven to create more steam to help the bread rise even more. I then quickly place the lid on the Dutch oven and bake at 450 degrees Fahrenheit with the lid on for 20 minutes. I then remove the lid from the Dutch oven, turn the oven down to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and continue to bake for another 10 to 20 minutes or until the loaves are golden brown. Remove your bread from the oven and place onto a wire cooling rack. While the bread is still warm, cut and remove the pieces of twine. Then place a cinnamon stick in the top of the loaf to create the pumpkin stem. I recommend allowing your loaves to then cool completely before cutting into them. To turn your mini pumpkin loaf into a bread bowl, Cut a large circle around the top of the loaf and then pull the circular pumpkin top off of the loaf and remove any excess bread in the center to make the bread bowl as deep as you'd like it. But don't throw away that extra bread, it's delicious. As soon as you're ready to serve, fill your bread bowl with your favorite soup, 
and then enjoy. You can freeze any extra loaves in a Ziploc bag and then thaw them, spritz with water, and rewarm in the oven whenever you'd like them. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like or a comment and subscribe if you love sourdough content.